Please welcome his TV debut right here in Gotham Comedy Live. Please welcome Mr. Gibran Salim. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. All right, let's do this. Guys, my name is Gibran, which can be tough for people to pronounce, but I could care less if someone mispronounces my name. Doesn't bother me. What's interesting, though, is a lot of times when I meet people and I say my name, I feel like they only hear what they're already expecting, right? Because I'll meet someone and I'll be like, hi, my name's Gibran. They'll be like, oh, nice to meet you, Muhammad. I'll be like, what? How in the world? Did they get my middle name? That is amazing. Are they psychic? I have no idea. No idea. I just want people to be comfortable when they meet me. I don't want them to be cautious. I don't want them to feel like they have to tippy toe over what they're going to say next, because that's when things go wrong, right? A while ago, I was traveling. I was late for a flight. I was in line waiting to get my boarding pass. I asked the girl in front of me what time it is, right? She looked at her watch. She said 9-11. Then she looked at me. <laughs> and a bead of sweat rolled down her forehead. And she was like, no offense though. And I was like, what? No offense? All you had to do was not say no offense and it would not have been offensive. But because she said no offense, it was very offensive. At that point, a third party overheard a conversation about time. The third party walks up. The third party is a TSA security cop. <laughs> he looks directly at me and he's like, hey man, what time is it? <laughs> I look at the girl, I look at the watch, I look back at the cop and a bead of sweat rolls down my forehead. <laughs> and I'm like, hey man, give me one minute. <laughs> It's 9-12. It worked out, though. On the way back, on my flight back to New York, that's actually where I met my last girlfriend. We went out for a year. I was in love with her. We broke up. I was still in love with her. I saw her for the first time since we broke up, and I made a really stupid mistake by asking her how she was handling the breakup. <laughs> Not a smart question. I asked her. She looked at me, and she was like, Gibran, I've never felt better. Oh! Do you feel that? Right in the jugular, which is here. I get that confused sometimes. I've never felt better. Then she flipped and she's like, Jerron, how are you handling the breakup? And at that point, I wanted to one-up her for some reason, but I didn't know how. So when she was like, Jerron, how are you handling the breakup? I was like, I'm gay. I'm gay now. I moved on completely. She was like, she was like, well, I guess this is a good time to tell you, but for the last month, I've been sleeping with your friend Chris. I was like, wow, you too? You guys are amazing. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is what I realized, one of the reasons why it didn't work out. I think when you're in a relationship with someone, you have to support whatever it is your loved one loves, right? I love comedy. It means a lot to me. It means the world to me. My ex wasn't on the same page as me. Like, she was trying to plan something out with me once, right? She's like, Jerron, what are you doing this day? And I'm like, oh, I actually have a show. She's like, okay, what are you doing that day? And I'm like, oh, I actually have a really big show. Uh, it's an audition for a TV show. It would really mean a lot if you came to it. You haven't been to a show in a while. She looked at me and she's like, Jerron, what if I told you I don't think you're funny? And that hurt. That is my one weak spot. I am very sensitive about that. So in response, I said to her, well, baby, what if I told you I don't think you're pretty? <laughs> yeah, I know. She was pissed. She just turned bright brown, because she was brown. So she didn't really change much, but she was mad. She was very mad. 
would not talk to me, gave me the silent treatment, and I knew even though I felt like she attacked me, I still had to do something to make it up, right? So I didn't know what to do. I ended up getting her a gift. I got her a set of very fancy makeup. Because I wanted to get her something that said, I'm sorry, but also, I'm not wrong. <laughs> so that was cool. I actually, I actually don't even like telling people I'm a comedian that often. I rarely tell people these days, because as soon as you tell someone a com uh, you're a comedian, inevitably they will ask for you to tell them a joke, which is fine, I understand that. But some people are very aggressive, and they will not stop asking until you prove to them that you are funny right then and there on the spot. <laughs> the interesting is the more aggressive someone is, it doesn't always connect to me what they do for a living, right? Like a while ago, I'm at this dinner party, right? I asked the guy across from me what he does for a living. He told me that he worked in peach pathology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, do you know what I do? And I'm like, I don't know, I man, do you work at Trader Joe's? Is that? <laughs> Are you Trader Joe? Is that? That would be cool. Like, we can barter, I don't know. He's like, no, 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 no. I work with people who have peach problems. I was like, oh, a speech pathologist. He was like, yeah, you probably would have never figured it out, but when I was little, I actually had a peach impediment. I was like, wow, I would have never guessed. That is amazing. He was like, yeah, what do you do? And I'm like, actually, I'm a comedian. I'm a stand-up comedian. And that's when he flipped. He was like, oh, really? Tell me a joke. And I was like, not now, man. It's not going to make sense in this context. Another time, he's like, no, no, no. You're a comedian. Tell me a joke, funny man. And I was like, dude, just, it's not going to make sense right now. Another time, I promise. He's like, no, you're a comedian. I want a joke. Now make me laugh. And then he crossed his arms and said, go. I was like. God, I was like, all right, man, fine, I'll tell you a joke. Just for you, I'll tell you a joke. I was like, knock, knock, right? He was like, who there? And I was like, Susan Sassafras. Look, I, I'm not that aggressive. I usually only respond when someone starts something. The only thing that I will stand up for that I'm aggressive about is armrest. I want armrest space when I sit down and there's armrest availability, right? I was at the movies a while ago. I'm sitting down out of habit. My arm is on the armrest, right? But there's another guy sitting next to me and his arm was on the armrest. And this guy was like twice my size, you know, like really like humongous, like a young Danny DeVito. <laughs> So he might have been smaller than me, but that's not the point, okay? We both sit down, we immediately get into like this passive aggressive game of elbow chest, right? Like I go up, he goes up, I go right, he goes left, he goes diagonal. I'm like, oh, Bishop, I didn't even see that, right? <laughs> Haven't played the game in a while. We're just getting into this passive aggressive game and I'm moving, I'm, at this point I'm just not even looking, I'm just moving around till finally I'm just getting so frustrated I knock his arm off and I'm just like, bam, checkmate, fool. <laughs> And he looks at me and he's just like, hey jerk, could you please remove your arm from my wheelchair? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I'm like, dude. I am so sorry, but I did not see that wheelchair because I'm blind could not see it at all. He was mad. He was like, how dare you fake a disability to get out of a situation? I have had enough. Then he just got up and walked away. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Dude is crazy. Thank you, guys.